For centuries, sauerkraut has been a traditional German dish consisting of shredded cabbage, salt, and sometimes spices left to ferment in a jar. This sour cabbage has been such a staple and essential food that in 1775, James Cook was awarded the Great Copley Medal when he observed and concluded that sauerkraut could help protect against scurvy due to its high vitamin C content. But with such an important staple in the German diet, have you ever wondered what's happening in such a jar? What's actually going on? Today we'll find out because I'm here to show you the science of sauerkraut. First you want to get a head of cabbage like so and peel off some of the outer leaves. Now let's cut it up and you might want a bigger knife than what I have, otherwise you'll be struggling like me. Also don't forget to cut out the core as it's easiest to do so after you cut the cabbage in halves or in quarters. As shown here, I tried a piece of the core only to regret it. Okay, this is taking too long, so let's speed it up. So you cut the cabbage into thin slices, then you can put it in a bowl like so. Now you want to add approximately 2% of the cabbage's weight with salt. Don't stress too much about it because it doesn't have to be exact, but don't be reckless. Too much salt can lead to accelerated growth of homofermentative lactic acid bacteria, leading to accelerated production of lactic acid. On the other hand, too little salt may lead to undesirable fermentation and softer than desired sauerkraut. Now pour that salt in, roll up your sleeves, and get to work. You're going to be grinding and mushing the salt in with the cabbage, and while that's happening, a watery brine should emerge. The salt causes water withdrawal from the cabbage cells, which then goes to fill the gaps of air between the cabbage shreds as you're seeing now. Keep mushing, at least until you have a decent amount of liquid now in your bowl, as it needs to be enough so when you place the cabbage in your jar, the brine submerges it. The salt causes water withdrawal from the cabbage cells, which then goes to fill the gaps of air between the cabbage, as you're seeing now. Keep mushing at least until you have a decent amount of liquid now in the bowl, as there needs to be enough so when you place the cabbage in your jar, the brine submerges it. You could also add other seasonings or spices like garlic for some flavor, but with the presence of my German grandma in the room, I didn't want to disappoint her, so I just stuck with salt. Great. Now there's enough liquid. You're going to place it in your jar after it's been sterilized first. Again, don't forget the juice, it's essential. You can push it down a little bit more if you like, just so you can squeeze any less water out of the cabbage. And so now you're going to need a weight to keep all of it down and to minimize the air so it's anaerobic. To do so, grab some plastic wrap, a weight, in this case we used a bowl, and have the plastic wrap touch the surface, leaving no air between it, and add the weight on top. Then close the jar and you're done. I recommend stirring it in a cool dark place. Every day, remember to burp the jar so you can release some pressure, otherwise it may explode. Wait two weeks to two months depending on how strong of a flavor you'd like. Uh, the fermentation will continue as the carbohydrates in the cabbage have been metabolized. So the longer you wait, the more and more sugar is consumed, which leads to a more sour flavor. However, if you keep waiting longer than two months, you risk the chance of secondary fermentation by yeast occurring. We, oh, yeah, this works. <laughs> now that we have two weeks on our hands, let's describe what's actually happening in this jar. Because it's amazing, honestly. In the sauerkraut, there's an ever-changing landscape during the different stages of fermentation. With the right conditions, lactic acid bacteria, or lab for short, becomes the dominant organisms in the final product. These labs are critical to its successful fermentation as they produce organic acids, bacteriocins, vitamins, and help with the flavor compounds that are a cornerstone to the sauerkraut's taste. Quickly, let's define fermentation as it is the anaerobic or no oxygen biochemical process in which organic or carbon containing compounds serve as both electron donors and acceptors. Thus, some organics have become reduced and others are oxidized. 
and there's no inorganic electron except it needed, such as oxygen. All right, back to the jar. As soon as you close the lid, a number of strictly aerobic bacteria, like Pseudomonas, Flavobacterium, and Acinotobacter species die off. Leuconostochemesenteroids, as seen on the screen, are one type of bacteria that typically start the fermentation and quickly produce lactic acid, acetic acid, and carbon dioxide. A heterofermentative lab, it consumes oxygen and produces carbon dioxide that contributes to an anaerobic atmosphere, helpful for the formation of vitamin C. This helps lower the pH and save the sauerkraut from spoiling, as the microorganisms that lead to mold or food poisoning cannot grow under these conditions. With this more anaerobic acidic environment, no other labs can grow too. These lactic acid bacteria will eat the sugar in the cabbage and mainly produce lactic acid, as the name tells. Keep in mind, these labs aren't all the same and are typically pretty diverse. For example, labs and other fermented foods can also produce hydrogen peroxide, nitrogen oxide, antimicrobial proteins, or peptides. So after three to six days, homofermentative lactobacilli will become the main organism due to anaerobiosis, low pH, and higher levels of salt. Homofermentative lab ferments glucose with lactic acid as a primate byproduct. The process continues until you open it up and eat it as air rushes in, and the environment is no longer anaerobic. It's then important to stir it as in a refrigerator so it stays cool and no biochemical processes could happen to spoil it. wondering what the heck why would I even go through the process of making this isn't it a lot of work just to make some fermented cabbage when I could just buy it in the store why even have sauerkraut in the first place I'll just eat a raw cabbage instead well besides the fact that it's pretty good it's also healthy in fact it may just be a probiotic superfood lactic acid bacteria has established benefits to help treat diarrhea constipation irritable bowel syndrome and various infections Lactic acid bacteria has also shown to help with your immune system to prevent various illnesses and promote lactose digestion. Some studies even showed that lactic acid bacteria can even prevent certain cancers. In a study linked in the comments, even a two tablespoon serving of sauerkraut meets recommended CFU range. And if you were thinking, gosh, why not eat just a cabbage? Sauerkraut also has 20 times the available vitamin C compared to a raw head. Homemade sauerkraut is also better than still bought, as research shows, because homemade sauerkraut has even more diverse bacteria that are beneficial together compared to just specific strains and commercially made ones. In addition, due to having to accommodate for shelf life, commercial sauerkraut can have little to no bacteria as it passes through pasteurization and processing. And honestly, since we're all stuck at home anyway, why not? It could even be fun. <laughs> 